Ah, the beauty of translation. So uh, in the last segment, we looked at how uh, specific tRNAs can carry uh, amino acids to the ribosome and uh, when specific anticodons match up with codons on the messenger RNA, uh, the uh, growing polypeptide is attached to uh, the uh, existing uh, amino acid on the newly um, joined tRNA. Now let's talk about some of what goes on here. First of all, uh, the question becomes, well, how does a particular amino acid get linked up with a specific tRNA? And, of course, the answer to that is enzymes. Uh, let's just look at the picture here first. Here we see this enzyme, and there's a specific amino acid with its particular shape. It docks to the active site of the enzyme. A little bit of energy is used there to prime the shape. Uh, and then a specific tRNA with a complementary shape to the active site uh, joins. Um, we, you know, split out um, the uh, A of P there and uh, change the conformation again, and it dumps out the now charged uh, tRNA. It's got its uh, amino acid that it will transfer to the ribosome. So again, the idea is a specific amino acid attached to the active site of the enzyme. tRNA with its own uh, specific three-dimensional shape attaches to the active site. Uh, and then the amino acid uh, is joined to the tRNA. And we now have a charged tRNA that's ready to transfer the amino acid to the um, ribosome. So if we scoot back here. There we see the events unfolding. Um, a tRNA will match up with another enzyme that's not seen here, link together the tRNA with the uh, amino acid, and then it can transfer the amino acid to the ribosome. Now the name of the enzyme, I don't know that you're going to be tested over that, but just to let you know, it's the amino acid tRNA synthetase enzyme. So that's the big fancy name for this, this enzyme that joins the amino acid to the tRNA. Uh, let's see, the other, the other thing that needs to happen is that the anticodon on tRNA needs to match the codon on messenger RNA. Now there is a little bit of wiggle room this uh, on, on uh, the tRNA uh, anticodon and RNA codon um, uh, sequencing. Uh, the third base on the codon uh, can have more than one tRNA bond with it. So again, we get a little bit of flexibility in the tRNAs that can uh, bond with a particular mRNA. Uh, and this is referenced as being wobble, so there's a little bit of flexibility there. Uh, now, the ribosomes themselves. Uh, the ribosomes are made of two parts. There's a large and small subunit, and they're predominantly ribosomal RNA, or rRNA. So a ribosome is some protein and this uh, specific RNA that gets uh, created. And again, the job of the ribosome is to uh, bring in the messenger RNA, so the ribosome brings in the messenger RNA and the tRNA. They dock on the small subunit. The large subunit then has these three sites. It's called the A site, P site, and E site. The way I remember them, I just think of the A site as being the accepting site. So new tRNAs can dock first at the A site. Uh, the P site is where the tRNA will shift over after it has transferred or received the uh, growing polypeptide. Now the exit site is where you have the discharged tRNA uh, that will then exit the ribosome. So here the new tRNA moves into the A site. The growing polypeptide is shifted over uh, to the uh, amino acid that's carried by this uh, new tRNA. Then once this tRNA loses its the polypeptide, it shifts over to the E site and then will get dumped out uh, from the ribosome. Now let's talk about these sites. Again, the P site um, takes the RNA and uh, contains the RNA with the growing polypeptide. The A site accepts the new tRNA with its uh, amino acid. And then the E site or the exit site is where the discharged tRNA that's lost its um, amino acid is released. So tRNA with the chain is in the P site for peptide, the growing polypeptide. A site is accepting, E site is exit. Mm -hmm. Nice, here you see some uh, anticodon, codon binding. So uh, keep in mind, let's scroll back quite a ways here. Uh, the anticodon is just three bases on the tRNA and they are complementary to the three bases on 
the mRNA. That's why it's important that mRNA is single-stranded. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, making this polypeptide that will eventually fold into a protein uh, occurs in three stages, uh, initiation, elongation, and then termination. Uh, again, the whole idea with initiation, you start the process. You link up a tRNA with a, a ribosome, and then the mRNA attaches, sort of like a little ribbon that moves in, and then the large subunit attaches. Uh, when you reach the start codon, you're off and running. Uh, the amino acids get added one at a time to the existing chain. Um, and, you know, there are serious steps here, but that's the basic idea. You add the amino acids one at a time. So let's look at the process overall. Uh, we can begin here um, at the A site. It accepts a charged tRNA with its amino acid. Then a little bit of energy is used to move this polypeptide chain over to the amino acid that was just brought in. So now here, this diamond-shaped amino acid, or uh, depending on your perspective, maybe square-shaped um, amino acid joins the polypeptide. Then, uh, again, uh, using a little bit of energy, everything is shifted down. The uh, discharged tRNA without the amino acid is then released. And then this particular tRNA, I'm sorry, the tRNA is released to the exit site. And then uh, this tRNA that has a polypeptide is now shifted to the P site. Uh, and it can start the process over again with another uh, tRNA carrying in another amino acid. Spend a little bit of time walking through this. Uh, you know, talk about this process with someone, uh, walk them through it, and explain to them the events that occur, and uh, you'll have a pretty good sense of how uh, polypeptides are assembled. Okay, uh, when a stop codon is reached, rather than a tRNA docking, it's a protein that's called a release factor that adds water uh, to the chain. Um, rather than amino acid, and then the chain is released. So here is this release factor. Again, it's got a stop codon uh, that is complementary, or I'm sorry, the stop codon uh, attaches to uh, the release factor. Then this uh, chain is cut off or cleaved here, and you release the polypeptide, and then it will fold into its three-dimensional uh, conformation, and you may potentially have a, a functioning protein. Now, um, you have a single messenger RNA, you can actually pull that RNA through a number of ribosomes at the same time. So you can make many polypeptides using a single messenger RNA. This structure that's uh, created, this um, complex of ribosomes, multiple ribosomes along um, a messenger RNA is called a polyribosome. So again, it allows you to make a lot of protein very fast. Here you can see actual images of the messenger RNA being pulled through all these ribosomes. And again, it's making multiple polypeptides. Um, so cool. Uh, let's see. Well, okay, lots of blah blah here. So you take the polypeptide, it will receive modifications. It can be uh, sent on to the ER uh, to be modified. You know, all sorts of things can happen to the polypeptide after it, um, it is uh, created. So, you know, it can be, has a confirmation change. It could have sugar is added, you can have phosphates added, all sorts of things can happen. Uh, let's see, this is more of the same, blah, blah, blah. You can join multiple polypeptides, like in the creation of hemoglobin. Um, signal peptides, you re really don't need to know much about this. All they're saying is, uh, when you're making this polypeptide, uh, there can be a protein uh, that attaches to it that helps it dock with uh, a pore, uh, or a re receptor, I guess is a better way to put it, a pore receptor. Uh, in the um, ER, and then uh, that protein can then be shifted into the ER, and then it can undergo its changes, have tags added to it, or molecular tags added to it, to have all sorts of things happen. Uh, but uh, again, this is a way that proteins can be modified after they are translated. All right, uh, in a moment we'll get into the last segment here uh, on mutations.